So one fascinating thing you said is uh, that blew my mind, and we went right past it, uh, which is the temperature is a really powerful. Like, if you were to think about the ways that different parts of the body, different systems in the, in the body, would communicate with each other, temperature would be a really good one. And that just, I mean, maybe it's obvious, but it kind of blew my mind just now that, yeah, these systems are all distributed. Right. And they have to kind of, they're not actually sending signals, but they're coordinating. They need some sort of universal thing to look at in order to coordinate. And temperature is a nice one to to uh, to build around. And that way, you could control the behavior of all these different systems by controlling the temperature. Right. It, it's attractive to think of a mechanism where this master circadian clock secretes a peptide or something that goes and locks to receptors in all the cells and gets it just right. But that leaves far too much room for variability, binding affinities, cells in a lot of parts of our body are at different stages of maturation. They're turning over liver cells and so forth. And for instance, our we have a clock in our gut and in our liver. It, such that if we were just take out your liver and put it on a table and just look at the expression of these genes, it would be in a 24 hour oscillation on its own. It's independent, but something has to entrain them and keep them all synchronized. And so it's not obvious that it would be temperature. Takahashi's great gift to biology was to show that all the stuff coming out of this master circadian clock at the end of the day, that's a weird statement, no pun intended. At the, <laughs> the end of the day and the night, at, at, the, um, at the end of the story, it all boils down to making sure that the temperature of tissues oscillates in the same fashion. It's blowing my mind and thinking like what other mechanism could possibly exist to create that kind of oscillation. Well, in the high, uh, you're, you're Russian, it's cold in Russia for a lot of the year. The hibernation signal in certain animals is a remarkable signal. There are peptides secreted from this very same clock that in animals like ground squirrels or bears, they go into a kind of a torpor where everything, reproduction, metabolism, everything is reduced while they're in their cave. They don't actually stay asleep all of winter. That's a myth. Um, and they actually do these very um, dramatic and periodic arousals from hibernation where they just shake and shake and shake. It looks like a seizure. And then they go back under into the torpor. That's from a peptide that's released. But that's different because that's about shutting down the whole system. It's clear that having these very regular oscillations every 24 hours is essential for everything from metabolism to reproduction.